In tonight's big story breakdown, we're digging into funding concerns surrounding the OSDE. Governor Kevin Stitt issued an executive order in June banning wasteful public relations spending. But it isn't stopping a D.C. based firm from continuing to pocket tens of thousands of tax dollars meant for public education. Here is a fresh look at what you're now paying for. It's been more than two months since Governor Kevin Stitt issued an executive order banning wasteful public relations spending across state government. Despite that ban, emails from vote strategies continue to go out to national media, hoping to score a prime time spot for State Superintendent Ryan Walters. This one blasts the presence of drag queens at the Olympics. Another warns school leaders who don't follow his Bible directive, which includes teaching from the Bible and having the Bible in every single Oklahoma classroom. They can go to California. California, Walters is quoted, want Ryan on the show to discuss? The Federal Department of Education should not exist. Uh, there, there's really no legal basis to have a Department of Education underneath our Constitution. Grabbing national attention isn't a new strategy for Walters. Fox 25 was first to report on the initial $30,000 contract with vote, leading lawmakers to strip the department's budget of funds for PR. The governor vetoed that measure, but then issued his statewide executive order, which states no state agency, director of a state agency, or any state employee shall use any tax dollars spent in or outside the state for the purpose of self-promotion or for the promotion of any matter outside the scope of the state agency. Since that order, OSDE has inked a new deal with vote to promote Walter's agenda. We don't yet know the exact terms. The firm's owner, Mary Vote, also works for the Heritage Foundation, which is the architect of the controversial Project 2025. Well, we filed an open records request in early July to see the exact terms of the state's new deal with vote strategies. We finally got this purchase order just days ago. You are now paying $60,000 a year to promote Walters on the national stage at $200 an hour. State Superintendent Walters calling on the speaker to start his impeachment proceedings today. And while that's not happening, we're digging into how we got to this point. Fox 25's Capitol reporter Peyton May giving us the timeline. This all started in 2023. State lawmakers passed bills funding teacher maternity leave and hailers in the classroom and a three year school security program. Fast forward to August of this year. Some school districts said they hadn't seen the money. And on August 6th, we first reported the Oklahoma Secretary of Education sent this letter to State Superintendent Ryan Walters voicing concern about the funds and a quote lack of response from him. Later that week, reports circulated about the missing funds. And on August 12th, House Republicans called out Superintendent Walters for, quote, questionable leadership tactics, accusing him of depriving districts of funding. That same day, Walters reached out to the Attorney General, asking for an opinion of one source of funding at issue, school security. You have to have that legal clarity on do funds roll over to the next year. It's not clear in legislation legally. So. That brings us to August 13th. The Senate Education Education chair spoke to Fox 25 about the missing funds. School districts are still uh, either not receiving the funding or being told that the parameters that uh, make them eligible to get that funding have changed. Later that day, Republican Representative Mark McBride asked lawmakers to sign on to a petition to investigate Superintendent Walters and the Department of Education. But a few hours later, the Speaker of the House said he wouldn't consider the request without 51 Republicans signing on. On August 14th, Walters called out the representatives signing the petition on Fox 25. They are liberal Republicans that are absolutely pushing the teachers union. Adding that the schools know what funds they're getting. Districts know how much money they're getting. They know the issues, the legal issues with maternity leave, with uh, the inhaler funds, with the school security funds. On August 15th, the legislature stepped in. House Republicans announcing they will be investigating the Department of Education's funding issues under a fiscal transparency committee. What we're looking at is are tax dollars being spent wisely and are they being spent the way the legislature intended? The next day, August 16th, Walters went to the Capitol calling on lawmakers to skip the investigation and go right to impeachment. I am calling on Speaker McCall and Mark McBride to begin their impeachment proceedings Monday. The Speaker of the House said that wasn't going to happen, instead sticking with the loft investigation moving forward. And on Sunday, the Attorney General released his opinion on school security funds, saying Walters needed to release them, adding the, quote, wasted months have left districts without millions of dollars of funds to, quote, protect students. That brings us to today. 
Districts I've reached out to still haven't heard about when they'll be receiving school security upgrade funding by the time this story aired. Reporting Peyton May, Fox 25 News. Well, taking a deeper look at the opinion from the attorney general that Peyton just mentioned, A.G. Drummond says that OSDE's own guidance to school districts was inconsistent. The opinion states the department advised districts that their funds were able to carry over through the three-year program period, but arbitrarily and without notice reversed course and zeroed out the district balances. According to Drummond, it notes three key reasons that carryover is allowed. House Bill 2903, which established the program and revolving fund placed on no fiscal year restrictions on the use of the funds. The relevant statutes only use expand or expenditure when addressing the OSDE, meaning the state agency is the only entity to have restrictions. And lastly, no constitutional fiscal year limitations restrict the ability to carry funds forward into subsequent fiscal year. The AG says a plain reading of the statute demonstrates legislative intent to provide $50 million in each of the three years of the program. Senate Pro Tem Greg Treat says he appreciates the AG issuing a concise and expedited opinion on the school security funds. According to Treat, the legislative intent was clear. It shouldn't have needed an attorney general's opinion. He says lawmakers spoke loud and clear when they passed the legislation. It's now his hope that there are no further delays complying with the law. Treat is pledging to remain focused on ensuring the money to protect children and is distributed to school districts immediately. As your big story breakdown, you can learn more about the vote contract and the school security funding concerns on OKCFox.com.